there has been a TY Beanie Boo invasion in my house and I am going to make over a little chest so that my daughter can have somewhere to store this stuff. <laughs> this is insanity. <laughs> Okay guys, seriously, my daughter has been collecting Beanie Boos for a few years now, and when I saw this little chest, which is, it's pretty small, I knew that this would be perfect. I knew that this would be the perfect little storage area for her to put her Beanie Boos. It can go at the end of her bed, and we're gonna make it really colorful. We're gonna do some purples. We're gonna make it colorful. We're gonna do some purples. Lane obviously wants to throw some of his beanie boos in there. So we are going to make this over. Let's get started. All right, let's see how many we can fit in there. Put them in. All right, let's close it. Top to top it off. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Let's, let's start painting this. The first thing I did was strip down the top of this chest. I used a chemical stripper first and I let that sit for about 15 to 20 minutes and then I went back with my plastic scraper that has a scoop that you guys know I really love and I scraped all the excess off. So you can see right here in this next clip, when it starts to bubble and flake, that is when you know that that chemical stripper is working. So when you see signs of that, then you know it's probably almost time for you to remove it. So here, I took my plastic scraper that has a scoop. I like it because it kind of pulls everything together and then I just scoop it in a cup and I dispose of it later on. But I take it all off and this will give me a good base to start with so that I can lighten up this top. Once I'm done with my plastic scraper, I take a triple zero grade steel wool and I'm going to scrub around the edges to get that excess stripper off. And I'm gonna scrub on the top as well. And then after I'm done doing this, I'm going to neutralize it with mineral spirits. The mineral spirits helps neutralize the chemical stripper so that it stops the process. It will also help get all the residual off and it opens the wood grain as well, which is very helpful for the next step because we are gonna be doing a ceruse finish on the top of this. This is an oak veneer and I just, I'm really digging that ceruse finish lately. So here I'm taking mineral spirits. I'm going to take my triple steel triple zero steel wool it's a different pad and i'm going to scrub it so that way i get all the excess off and i get i neutralize the stripper and then also at the same time i'm going to open the wood grain without raising it Once the mineral spirits has dried, I went through with my Surf Prep 3x4 electric ray and I'm using a 120 grit and I'm going to sand down the finish to smooth and get any excess finish that is on there and this will help lighten it up. So I wanna show you that I always go with the grain when I'm sanding, but this particular top has a few, the veneers going a few different ways and you're gonna see right here. So there's one area that's going horizontal and then this area is going vertical. So be cognizant of that when you are sanding. And so I, like I said, I go with the grain and that's what I did on the entire top. I started with a 120 grit and then I used my dusting brush and I dusted all the sand off to kind of see where it was at that point. Mm -hmm. 
once I dusted all of it off, I knew that the this is where I wanted the finish to be. So it was light enough. Now what I'm going to do is go in with my wire brush and I'm going to deepen the grain. So I want to show you something. Some people are, they ask me, does this destroy the grain, the wood? It's scratching it. No, what this brush does is it goes into the already pre-existing wood grain. So in oak, some of the wood grain is a little bit harder than others. So this is going into the softer wood grain and it's almost cleaning it out. And you can see right here how it takes the debris out. So it's kind of cleaning and deepening that wood grain that's a little bit softer. And this will allow the white wax to sit in there deeper to give it a higher contrast. So you're gonna see right here in the next clip. So I go through with the wire brush and then I take my dusting brush and I get all the excess off because I wanna get it away from that grain. So right here, you can see that the wood grain is deepened and it's almost lighter. Okay, you don't see a lot of black in that wood grain. So when you go over, you can see to the right, I haven't done it yet, so it's black. It's basically the wood grain's dirty. And then to the left, it's cleaner. So what this is doing is it's taking the debris out of the wood grain. Once I did that to the entire top, I decided I wanted to take T-Rose and do a wash. We're gonna do some purples and pinks on this. And so I wanted to see what a wash with T-Rose would look like. You're gonna add enough water that it's super liquidy. That way you can just put it on like a wash and you can wipe it away with a paper towel or a rag. But the thing is, is I probably could have done this with burlap or white or something because at the end, it really didn't have a pink hue. It just lightened it up, which that's mainly what I wanted anyway. So you could really use any color. You could have used a white, you could use tea rose, you could use burlap. It didn't have as much of a tint of pink as I thought it would but it still lightened it up, so it did the job. So what I'm doing is I am using a cheap chip brush and I'm brushing it on here and then I'm gonna wipe it back with a shop towel and then that will give me my washed look on the top that I'm gonna do first before we do anything with the wax. You wanna allow this to fully dry before you do the next step. So the next step is to take a white wax. So I used the Best Dang Wax in white and I'm using a La Petite brush, but I'm using a white wax and I'm going to put this all over the top and I'm gonna to generously put it on there because I want it to get into the wood grain. So I'm gonna go with the grain at first and then I'm gonna do circles because you can see with this wood grain being deeper, you'll be able to see the areas that you have missed. So you can do circles to kind of push it into the wood grain. And then once I've done it with the grain, I go against the grain. And then afterwards I take a microfiber cloth. This is a water-based wax so I can just clean my rags. But if you're using an oil-based wax, then use a shop towel because you're, it's a lot easier to wash a water-based wax out of a rag. But now what I'm gonna do with the wax is I'm going against the grain and you can see the patterns. Remember earlier we talked about some of the patterns are different on the top of here. So I'm gonna go a, the opposite direction of the grain to push that wax into there even more and to pull off the excess wax. And you can see how pretty it looks. This is going in my daughter's room. She's a little bit older. It's not gonna be high traffic. So this wax is not only going to create a ceruse finish, but it is going to also seal the top of this piece. So you can see the difference right here. It just looks really pretty. The next step is to clean the piece to prep it for paint. So I'm using Dixie Belle's White Lightning Cleaner. This is a TSP based cleaner, and it also acts as a deglosser. You do wanna go over it with clean water and a clean rag afterwards just to get the residual off, but it will prep it for paint and the chalk mineral paint sticks really well. So I'm also going to use Dixie Belle's Boss. It's a gray blocking primer. They do have clear and white, but I'm using gray because I'm gonna be using some lighter colors. I just wanna ensure that I don't have any problems with tannins, which is also bleed through. Even though oak is not known to bleed, it can. So. The first color we're gonna use is Mason Dixon Gray, and I'm gonna put that at the bottom. So Mason Dixon Gray is like a, it's a, almost a purple gray color, which I think is going to blend really pretty with these purples. So we're gonna start at the bottom with the Mason Dixon gray and I'm going to put two coats of that. And then a few weeks ago, I don't know if you guys remember, but we mixed a purple color for one of the makeovers that I did. This is a one-to-one -one ratio of Plum Crazy and Amethyst by Dixie Bell, and it creates that really pretty purple color. So we're gonna use that as well, and we are going to paint the top of this piece. So the bottom is Mason Dixon Gray, the top is my little mix. 
But while I was painting it, I realized that I think we needed a better transition color in the middle, just to make the blend a little bit easier. So what I did is I am going to, once I'm done painting this custom purple color, you're gonna see that I'm going to actually take a mix of Mason Dixon Gray and this purple color to create a middle color for my transition. This is the key to blending, is to make it e as easy as possible and to make the colors blend as easy as possible. And so I thought when I stepped back, you know what, it needs a middle color. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a mix of the colors we already had, so the Mason Dixon Gray, and then that one that I mixed. So it kept, after a few weeks, I, I never throw my mixes away, because you just never know. And so I put a cling wrap around the top of it, and it stays really nice. So I'm going to be mixing that custom color and the Mason Dixon Gray to get a color that is gonna help transition that center. So that way the Mason Dixon Gray can mix into this color that we're doing right now, and then this color we're doing right now can mix into that other custom purple color. It's just gonna make it easier and it's gonna be a smoother blend. I can't really give you a good ratio. I just kind of went with it. So I got a dusty lavender color, but you can see right here, I'm just gonna go over that transition line between the Mason Dixon Gray and that other purple color. So that way this just makes the blend a little bit easier. So if this ever happens to you and you're like, you know what, I think I need a middle color, go ahead and do it. It's not gonna hurt anything. It's actually super helpful for when you are trying to blend a darker into lighter to have that middle one. So now we have five colors, right? So we made that custom last week with those two colors. We have that. And then we have our Mason Dixon Gray and we mixed those to get that one. So we've got five colors and we have three jars of paint. For blending, you're gonna need a brush for each color. You're going to need a mister bottle, something to put moisture on it. You're gonna need a clean, dry rag, and then you're also gonna need a clean, dry, neutral brush, and that's gonna help smooth everything out. So the first thing I do is I mist the area, and then we're going to take the paint. So we're gonna take Mason Dixon Gray, and we're gonna put it right up against that transition line. So that way we have moisture in the paint, because that is the key. You don't want too much moisture, because then you're gonna have your paint dripping, and it's gonna thin it out, but you want just enough that those paints work together. So we're gonna mist it again, and I'm going to use that new color that we just mixed, and I'm going to wet that transition line right there. And I go down into the Mason Dixon Gray, and then with the Mason Dixon Gray, I'm gonna go up into that purple color and that's the key to blending so we're going to take our mason dixon gray and we're going to we're not going to put any more paint on that brush we're just going to start at the bottom and feather it in up into that purple and you can see how adding that middle color really helped with that transition and it made it smoother so you're going to take that purple brush you're going to go down into the mason dixon gray you can do circles horizontal you can see we're doing horizontal we're gonna do vertical, we're gonna do some circles, and now we're gonna spray it a little bit and we're gonna take our clean, dry, neutral brush and we're going to feather it all to just do a final smooth. When you are blending, you wanna use a light hand and you wanna use multiple directions, that way your blend is seamless. We're gonna move up to the two custom colors and blend those the exact same way. So we're gonna mist it, we're gonna add some paint to the transition line with the, the darker purple color, and then we're going to mist it, add some paint with the lighter purple color, and then we're going to just kind of blend them into each other. So right now we're adding the wet paint. We're misting it, and then we're going to add the lighter color. You don't want a ton of paint on your brush. Just dip it in and take all the excess paint off. But we're gonna go up into that darker purple color and we're just gonna kind of chop it. You see what we're doing is we're kind of taking that transition line. We're almost blending it already. Now we're gonna take the dark purple and we're gonna go down into the lighter purple color. If you feel like your brush is, brush is catching, make sure that you put a little bit more moisture on there because that's the key, is having just enough moisture. We're gonna to toggle between the two brushes. So now we've got the lighter purple and we're going to start at the bottom and go into that darker purple. And then we're gonna do circles, horizontal, vertical, diagonal. 
But now we're gonna go into our, we're gonna use our clean dry neutral brush and we're gonna start feathering it and we're gonna start softening that blend. So we missed it, we go horizontal, we go vertical, you're gonna do circles with that one, you can do diagonal, make sure you keep moisture on it and you're going to just blend those colors into each other. I am going to be using some rice decoupage paper. The reason why I did the lighter color on the bottom is because the background of this paper is white and my daughter really, really wanted it. I don't know how it's going to look. I'm hoping it looks good, but here's the thing about rice paper is it has the fibers in it. So sometimes you can see the fibers, so you're not going to get a perfect decoupage with it. There will be some fibers that you're going to see later on. So if that's going to bother you, then, use a paper that does not, it's not rice paper. You will see it in the final pictures. I try as hard as I can to get the fibers off of there, but it just, it is what it is and my daughter really wanted this paper. Rice paper is very forgiving and because I'm going over edges, what I do is I cut it and I'm actually misting this with water first and taking a chip brush and just kind of fitting it. This helps me to fit it where it needs to go before I put any kind of clear coat on it. So I'm using water first and it will end up drying if I wanted it to dry, but this will also allow me to see how much of the fibers I'm gonna see because once you put a clear coat on there, it does become a little bit more translucent. Now, this paper would look really, really flawless over a white background, but that's not what we're doing. Again, this is my daughter's piece. We're gonna do what she wants. So I'm using water to just kind of place it, make sure that I don't have, I'm minimizing any of the wrinkles. Again, this is a rice paper, so it's got fibers in it. So the fibers sometimes make it look like there's wrinkles, but this is allowing me to fit it on the piece first before I put my clear coat on. Because if I don't like the way it looks, then I can just pull it off because it's just water. Also, with this being on its back, this allows me to correct any paint underneath and you can see over to the left hand side under that lip, I need to add a little bit more purple. So I'm kind of killing two birds with one stone here. I'm doing my decoupage and you'll see me, I'm gonna correct that paint that we missed before. So I'm just carefully putting this on here and fitting it on here. And then again, I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna fix the paint. But once I have it to where I want it and it's all fitted, then I'm going to take gator hide and you can use any clear coat that you want and i am going to final do a final seal on it so i'm going to take the pay, the brush and i'm going to take gator hide and i'm going to put a final seal on there and that kind of helps it set where it needs to go and it allows me to smooth it even more and then i'm going to allow it to dry and then we'll do another coat of gator hide over top of it My daughter wanted another pop of color on here and so I'm taking the Plum Crazy and a cheap chip brush and I'm just going over the edges. You can see over to the left, I already did the little medallion that's in the front, but we're gonna take it and we're going to put it on all the edges and I'm gonna take a microfiber cloth and I'm gonna wipe it away. And then what I do is I actually spray a little section of the microfiber cloth with water and I'm going to remove even more of it, the stuff that looks a little bit messy. So I'm gonna remove that from the bottom to clean it up. And I'm gonna do that around the entire piece on all the edges.
Once that's dry, I am going to go over this entire piece with another layer of gator hide so that I can lock in that decoupage paper even more and we can just seal the body and make sure that everything is good to go. Hello. Thank you guys so much for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. This is the final piece right here. I'm going to have some, I'm gonna have some staged pictures up here in a second. We're gonna fill this little guy up with all those little TYs and put it up in my daughter's room. She loves it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, everything I use is in the description below. Until next time, happy creating, and I will see you guys next, I don't know, in a few days. I'll see you in a few days. All right, guys. Oh my love You're such a fragile thing I know And with the winter comes the ice, the snow But I'm here at all And oh my love About the cold just yet. The trees haven't started to shed 